we are getting apparently 10 revealed cards from the mobilitics card backs which is a hell of a lot all right let's see what we got here we're refreshing the twitter now all right okay little scouts are taught that if you're not ready for everything you're not ready for anything Adventures are usually the ones you never expected to take. So, I think it's okay to not have all the answers. You just need the courage to keep looking. Oh, and friends to keep you out of trouble while you do. I can't wait to see where the next journey leads. and you guys just do all this weird stuff guys come on come on try to try to give me <laughs> come on just be a little more normal guys please <laughs> thank you okay anyway we've got yumi we've got nar let's jump into the new cards let's see do we have the reveals out now refreshing the page i mean eventually he'll come out and we'll see oh sh we got new cards wait a second okay hold up hold up Time to wake up, guys. It's happened. Hothead. All right. A new Yordle. A three mana, four two Shereman Bandle Yordle. When it attacks, grant the top champion in your deck plus one, plus one, and a random keyword. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Transposition. Four mana, fast Bandle. Recall an ally. The next ally you play this round with equal or less cost, costs zero instead. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. So basically you can recall an ally and effectively play it as something else that costs a similar amount, which is an interesting niche because there's ways of cheating out cards that have high base costs, right? Like can't can't you wouldn't w would it cost the same as like a like for example something discounted like a Scuttlegeist or a Plaza Guardian, would you be able to play any card that costs 10 or less for zero that turn? Not sure. We'll see. We'll see. A good way of potentially like cheating out yetis. I mean, yetis are zero ma or, or one mana anyway, right? Abominable yeti. Oh yeah, abominable yeti. Abominable yeti is an easy one. You can cheat out like an eight mana card on like round two or three in the most ideal of circumstances. All right, heroic refrain. Three mana burst. Give two allies plus two plus one this round. So this is really really reminiscent of uh, the stand united one, the stand together one it's that that one is just give two allies plus one plus two this one give two allies plus two plus one we'll see how this is going to have to be used after we see more of the set spirit portal a bandle focus to play discard one grant all allies plus one plus one wow Whew. <laughs> at focus speed <clears throat> huh i mean it, yeah it's sort of like vision so it's a grant it's a permanent buff and it's at focus speed so you can use it on like a burst attack and it's a good way of like having discard fodder for like the discard yordle archetype this is pretty expensive we'll see if there's any way to use this but a swarmy enough discard archetype could be strong yordle portal to play discard one manifest a yordle that costs three or less and summon it any yordle that costs three or less so to evaluate that we're gonna have to go into the full the full yordle <laughs> keyword anything that costs three or less i mean there's a lot there's a lot and it'll count as a summon effect not a play effect so it won't trigger like bandle city mayor and stuff but it is a burst summon yeah huh wow that's really really interesting all right we've got more cards so let's let's continue face sprout here i'll i'll, I'll go to the end for oh shit. I can't go to the end. Manifest a Fey and grant it plus one plus one. Okay, that's another interesting one. So we're gonna have to go through the list of Fey's as well. Honestly, this one 
actually looks like it has to be good right one mana burst just for plus one plus one i feel like i mean the phase are often going to be weak i know there's like fade blade twirler i know there's like picks but one mana for plus one plus one of flexibility is actually going to be pretty solid phase are bad in general i honestly don't know the phase off the top of my head like at all like like even a little bit all right fey aid three mana burst create a hungry owl cat in hand then grant fey allies in hand plus one plus one that's gonna be hard i know the owl cats are phase i believe god who who knows what phase are this is the first time phase have actually mattered <laughs> does that like i see everyone in chat's like wait what is a fey uh, i don't know <laughs> yumi is definitely gonna be a fey yeah yumi is gonna be a fey owl cat's a fey <laughs> tasty fey folk yeah yeah all the eggplants are fey's gleaming lantern three mana fey Every, each round of the first fey you play cost two less whoa all right and that's like a really really strong card potentially if the fey's actually have good cards attached to those keywords a three mana three three where each round the first fey you play cost you less and it is a fey itself is insane by the way so i don't know if the fey keyword is attached to good enough units but looking at these cards these effects are insane like gleaming lantern can discount itself you can find it off of fey aid uh sorry not off of fey aid, like off of fey sprout you can like fey sprout into gleaming lantern and play a 4-4 four four on turn three uh that's gonna be really really hard to kill and it's gonna be providing value every turn like that's really really good potentially but if maybe there's not enough good phase then it won't be a deck but these cards have scary effects so far blast cone seedling and ionian fey play give me barrier this round or grant me impact okay so it's either permanent impact or barrier this round right interesting for a two mana two two fey that you can run in either deck <clears throat> hmm that one seems a little bit underwhelming i mean the idea of a barrier unit that's cheap you know the bright steel protector is nice but without three attack not being able to block is uh, a little unfortunate and a two mana two two impact is kind of below the curve could be like for shen even, even a shen deck probably wouldn't want to use this though all right grandfather fey a two mana one two ionian bandle when i'm summoned create a hungry owl cat at hand when you summon another fey grant it plus one attack so <clears throat> yeah no it's it's basically like your to explore here the fact that it creates a hungry owl cat in hand is pretty scary so basically fey's are going to be very 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 swarmy right like this is the identity of the fey cards they're just going to full swarm the board hungry owl cat and anything that someone's hungry owl cat has ties to face because hungry owl cat is a fey we know that you know the <laughs> fey explorer yeah no <laughs> we're actually we're we're actually just getting fey explorer i mean this honestly grandfather fey i like to look at this card and think that in testing it was a plus one plus one but they were like hmm didn't really work that well for your explorer let's just launch this as plus one attack only eh <laughs> yeah yeah so some of you guys in chat are saying the same exact thing that's so funny all right <laughs> but yeah now we're, we're seeing some pretty strong fey cards here so let me go ahead and we're gonna actually to be able to talk about these cards we're actually gonna have to pull up a list of the phase and and even even some of the yordles of course because to be able to evaluate wait a second what was what was the yordle wasn't there a card oh yeah yeah yordle portal sorry i missed it manifest the yordle that cost three or less and summon it so let's go ahead let's go ahead and check out the implications of these <laughs> Let's let's see let's see what we have in store for us with these phase. All right, so the manifest a random fey, loud? Yeah, sorry, the in-game volume is a little bit loud here. Let me. There we go. All right. So in terms of manifest a random fey at one meta burst. And of course, you know, with a manifest of random fey, you're also getting plus one, plus one. And each round, the first fey you play costs two less. These are some really scary effects. So the first thing is Gleaming Lantern is a pure Bandle city card, right? You can't run this in as an Ionia card. Um, it's a pure Bandle card. And I think the best phase might be basically 
uh ionia i mean so i know that tasty fey folk is gonna be really really good for some of these you can get tasty fey folk randomly off of phase sprout uh and that you can do that in any region and that'll be a five three which is ridiculous i will say this is one of the scariest things about face sprout the fact that you can get fey folk off of it this is really really important because tasty fey folk is it's a lifesteal card so it's a matchup tech it's a hard matchup tech right it's just for like aggro so any deck that is just casually running fey uh sprout is going to have a chance of just pulling out tasty fey folk and getting basically the hard aggro counter on the spot right which yeah no it's pretty good as some of you guys are pointing out in chat we've got one two three phase coming into the game it's not going to be able to pull alicat because alicat is a token card um and how many phase one two three four five six right so we're probably going to get more phase but we can assume there's going to be probably roughly 12 so your odds of manifesting any given including a random tasty fey folk are probably going to be in in the realm of like 25 percent off of that card when you get it it'll be a 5-3 life steal which will absolutely shatter aggro loping telescope is going to be pretty good off of this the plus one plus one will allow it to you know block fearsomes and stuff um it's still going to be basically a random body that's just good for chaining manifests right so looping telescope is good honestly the current fey aren't bad right swool squirrel is going to be pretty useless furious fey folk however is actually going to be nice because even though the card isn't good the fact that it's a nice expensive card in the pool as a potential like value unit as a potential finisher it's kind of like when you get it off of bandel city mayor randomly um which is just you know being able to have an expensive option that you can just like put down when you're low on steam you just manifest and you're like oh yeah no i'll take a six four is a six five quick attack that gets impact sometimes sure right so that's not bad um yeah there's a there's a lot of decent phase in this game for this wow there's actually like no phase in this game right now this is crazy i mean flower child and picks aren't gonna be great of course what you can see here when i search fey a lot of them are just yordles right because they summon the owl cats um but like when you get a loping telescope you're happy when you get a tasty fey folk you're happy um and then it's literally just like those and soul squirrel and fey folk right and of course any new faith that they're adding and they're probably going to add more but like gleaming lantern is very good and very scary <clears throat> um i do however think and we don't know this for sure we don't know this for sure but it seems likely to me that the fey archetype is going to be a committed bandle plus ionia archetype that's my guess um we'll have to see how it plays out but for example if you really want to get value out of gleaming lantern then you might end up running cards like tasty fey folk as well right tasty fey folk of course is a pure ionia card and gleaming lantern is a pure bandle card now if you know if you're running other phase like swole squirrel or Pix or flower child those are all mono ionia cards but as of right now we don't have like a ton of important phase that are only ionia i suspect we'll get some and that's why i'm suspecting that it will the fey archetype will be bandle ionia but as of now from what we've seen so far you could just build it bandle right it could just be a bandle deck with gleaming lantern you know and a bunch of alicat summoning stuff we'll see i think they'll give us things that will that will force us to be an ionia but We'll, we'll have to see is yumi ionia yumi would be a bandle targon card probably which means you'd be able to run it in a bandle ionia deck if, if you're going for a fey deck <clears throat> fey blade twirler is literally a yordle his name is fey blade twirler yeah what's up with that <laughs> how, how did this happen how did we get here who knows who <laughs> who can say who can say anyway i've got to i've got to kind of like look through these a little bit and see kind of like how this archetype is going to play then there's the create a hungry alicat in hand and then grant fate allies in hand plus one plus one honestly i mean i don't know how many phase we'll be able to run it feels kind of hard to run a full fade deck at the end of the day <laughs> this is a good way of buffing all your hungry alicats if you hungry owlcat however it doesn't really have an amazing buffable stat line right there are two one spell shields which means if you buff them once then you're gonna be able to get 
uh three two spell shields which isn't useless i mean you're blocking fearsomes at this point you're putting out noticeably more pressure but if you're trying to like buff them a second time with another fate aid or perhaps um what was the what was the spirit portal yeah like if you're just like going wide and swarming and buffing the stat line of alakats becomes like a four three which is really really awkward for a double buff you're not really gonna be able to like do a lot with that stat line so eh, it's it, it's just it, it doesn't feel like there's a lot we can do there at the end of the day all the fake cards we're gonna have to wait to see how they're gonna fit into the bigger picture because we know we're gonna be getting more face energy in the future the one that i'm most important to talk most interested in talking about is actually this card transposition recall an ally the next ally you play this round with equal or less cost costs zero instead this card is interesting because as you guys have said you can in theory cheat out some stuff pretty fast right it's a self recall right that is basically comparable i mean we can think about cheating this out in decks like ari kennan would probably have no business using this i don't think they play anything expensive enough i mean you're not you're not going to use this on like sinan i don't think yeah it, it would be a worse retreat in a deck like that ice pillar looking kind of juicy <laughs> ice pillar is kind of interesting sure yeah, yeah yeah ice ice pillar actually looks kind of scary off of transposition there's definitely some cute things you can do with it right like here let, let's let's brainstorm some ideas together yeah yeah ice pillar is adorable you're not really cheating it out early because so the, the play would be like you play ice pillar on turn eight or earlier if you've ramped then you like you can transposition it play like a matron or you can play ice pillar again because it just refills your mana and then you just you know you're able to transposition for zero mana like a matron or some kind of yeti if you're really doing a nut combo the cute thing is the the, the abominable guardian right the yeti that you can in theory cheat out very early the only problem with this is like there's basically no way this will make any sense as a deck the point of abominable guardian is a full yeti deck which bandle doesn't help with and if you already have the abominable guardian out then you don't really even i mean you're happy just having the free five five that early right but for like maximum meme potential you would be able to cheat out you would be able if you had abominable guardian on turn two or three you could then Wait, 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 could you? Yes, yeah, you, you could do this on turn three. That would be the earliest. That would be the earliest you could possibly do this, right? It would have to be exactly two Yeti Yearlings. That's two mana. On turn three, you'd have four total mana with the Abominable Guardian out, and you would use that mana for transposition, and you could play any eight mana or less card from your hand on turn three in the maximum meme combo. This will definitely not be competitive. Absolutely not. But being able to play any eight meta unit on turn three would be really hilarious in those hand states where you've drawn exactly two Yeti yearlings, transposition, and abominable guardian, and and all by turn three, you would be able to do that. Which it's hilarious. What can we do on turn three that would be funniest with this? Well, I mean, it, it even works on champions, right? Yeah, because it's any ally that you just play. Trindemir on turn three. <laughs> there's a lot of these that would actually have to be like it would have to be within either bandle or foliard right mirror mage on turn three is hilarious yeah <laughs> god uh Mir mirror mage on turn three is good that is a good one we wouldn't be able to play a lot of these cards because we're we would be in uh bandle and foliard at this point but yeah something like that like trindemir on turn three mirror mage on turn three like if you're building this as a meme deck i certainly hope you have a lot of like seven or eight drops because the sad thing is you also god guys this is so unlikely to pull off because you also need to draw the card that you're playing on turn three in addition to the abominable guardian the two yearlings and the transposition it's literally a five card hand on turn three like and one of them is a two off uh but you'd be able to you'd be able to get this on like turn five a decent amount like after you have other yetis there's some cute things there's some cute things all right but yeah transposition i don't really see this being competitive off the bat but it's a very unique card that has some scary combo potential if they enable it right so don't see a way for this to make sense yet but super super unique and then there's hothead grant the top champion in your deck plus one plus one and a random keyword 
<laughs> and this is a Shirima Yordle for some reason? What can you do with this? That's hilarious. Like, I mean, so obviously what people will say is stuff like Draven's biggest fan, you know, puts it on top. Lurk? Dude, putting this, I mean, it's a Shirima card, so you could actually just put this in Lurk. That's really funny. I... I mean, as much as Lurk is dependent on the champions, like, it doesn't make sense with Pike wanting to turn into a spell, and Rek'Sai doesn't really need a random keyword. So, it's it's funny, but it doesn't really work there. Honestly, in, in a kind of, like, Mono Shreema deck with, uh... Oh, God. Would... Wait, wait, wait. Does Call even draw the top champion? To draw a champion right of Calling? I don't know if this even draws the top champion, guys. I think it might draw a random champion now. If this if this draws if Rite of Calling draws a random champion, then Hothead won't even necessarily guarantee that the Rite of Calling gets the buff. Which would be really, really awkward. It doesn't draw the top champion, you tested it before with Draven. Yeah, I did, right? I mean, unless they changed it since then. But it doesn't it doesn't actually draw the top one. Which is which is really, really, really awkward. That would be, yeah, yeah, super, super awkward. So, yeah, I mean, being able to grant the top champion in your deck is is cute with, like, you know, Draven's the biggest fan or any draw card. But it feels like it's hard for this to actually do a lot of combos, right? <laughs> there's the, the, the Golden Ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's Golden Ambassador, draw champion, and granted plus two, plus two. If Hothead is able to draw... The buffed card from like golden or sorry if, if if ambassador and call are able to draw the buffed card from hothead then there would actually be a really cool combo there but that would only work if they changed it right uh and unfortunately i think hothead it's they designed this card to not really be reliable enough to be competitive but it's really really interesting and random keywords are actually scary I, I think i think this effect is a lot scarier than people think plus one plus one and a random keyword can actually tear some ass like it can actually do some really really crazy things there's a lot of champions in the game like imagine draven just coming down as a 4-3 with a with a random keyword in addition to quick attack there's a lot of very very scary things this can do um that being said i don't think it's designed to be consistent enough if it doesn't work with ah it, it, if it doesn't work with right of calling or golden ambassador or entreat then it's just not going to be able to be consistent enough at doing what it wants to do. And then the <clears throat> the last thing that's in interesting to kind of like break down here is Yordle Portal, right? Manifest a Yordle that costs three or less and summon it. That's super interesting. How many, I mean, how good is that? And it summons it as well. And of course, the, the Hothead, the card we just looked at, is a Yordle that costs three or less. I believe that's the only one that we just looked at. So, yeah, we, we've got the pool of Yordle Newbie, Wizened Wizard, Trevor Snooze Bottom, Mentor of the Stones, Petty Officer, Pompous Cavalier, Thunder Fist, Fussy Caretaker, Bilge Rat Rascal, Vandal Painter Mayor. Okay, I can't read all these. There's too many goddamn Yordles in this game. But basically, a lot of them aren't really great, um, especially for how much this costs, right? Because the Uriel Portal costs three, right? And you have to discard one. A lot of the options you're going to be seeing are Yordles that cost like one or two that you're just never even going to want from Yordle Portal. So if you see like a bunch of cheap ones, then you're just down on value. Uh, and really, you're just trying to hit... Ah, what even are you trying to hit off of this? None of them are really amazing, right? Like, at that point, you'd rather just kind of like main deck the Yordle you have. You're summoning on Burst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burst Trevor is insane. All right, Burst Trevor is really funny. Burst, Tre Burst Trevor is hilarious. I'll, I'll, I'll grant that. I'll grant that. <laughs> like, yeah. Be being able to have, like, the Burst Summon option is really, really nice. But for three spell mana, it feels a little bit hard to actually make it competitive. Petty Officer would also be really good in something like Yordles in Arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that would be good. It doesn't say Yordle Follower. <laughs> Wait, guys, guys, guys. There's there's no way it can select champions. There's actually just no way, right? Manifest a Yordle that costs three or less. No, it doesn't it doesn't include champions. You just can't manifest champions. Champions just aren't in the manifest pool. There's no way, right? Right? Right. Yeah, no, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Petty won't summon anything because it's not playing. I Petty uh is on summon 
Oh wait, Petty is on play. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm an idiot. Yeah, Petty even doesn't work with this because Petty's a play effect because it has you choose between the two. Sorry, I was confusing it with all the others. So yeah, Petty being a play effect doesn't even work with Yordle Portal because Yordle Portal summons it. So yeah, I think Yordle Portal is just going to be a little too awkward. Like summoning Trevor at burst speed is one of the funnier things you can do. But I don't see this really hitting decks. So yeah, overall, that's kind of my initial impressions here. There's some meme potential. I'm curious where the face energy is going. Um, it is looking like a semi all-in deck. Presumably building like the full Fey deck is probably not going to be that strong uh, if you're running all the Fey cards, but probably like a semi Fey that's, you know, using some of the powerful ones like Gleaming Lantern uh, and, and absolutely like Fey Sprout. This card is also very scary. The ability to just have Lifesteal on an option that you get sometimes but don't have to main deck is the most powerful way to use Lifesteal, right? And if they're not adding a lot of Fey cards, then you might be able to get, you're probably going to have at least 20% chance of pulling Tasty Fey Folk off of Fey Sprout, which is amazing right like against the aggro that will just auto win you the game straight up it's absolutely ridiculous when that happens and if they add to the fate pool in a way that like makes them strong face sprout looks just really really scary right but yeah gleaming lantern looks really really good in a fey deck uh blast cone seedling a little bit underwhelming with these numbers grandfather fey um could be good in 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 a big fey deck that's one that's you know a little bit too synergistic to be able to tell right away uh, Fey Aid, probably a little underwhelming with how much it costs. I mean, granting the free Owlcat is nice, but you're probably not going to have enough Fey Allies for Fey Aid to be nuts unless there's some kind of crazy synergy that breaks it. Like, unless Yumi's level up is something super specific, like, you know, I level when you've buffed enough Fey Allies or something like that, right? I, I don't see Fey Aid seeing play. Fey Sprout super solid card uh i expected this one to see a lot of experimentation inside slot ends but again that one will also depend on the new phase they feel like adding spirit portal uh looks pretty underwhelming uh for for its price like four mana is a little bit expensive for a board buff plus one plus one um yordle portal also a little bit too expensive heroic refrain just ends up being god what is that is, what, what is that card it's it's the we stand united card we stand together is that it yeah we stand together right it's the three mana plus one plus two burst uh heroic refrain is basically just the stat swap for bandal um and i i don't think there's really much of a reason to use this effect like even the pantheon decks that could benefit from it aren't using the other one um so two versus two wait wait, wait. wait, wait. did they oh god oh no it's literally unplayable oh no oh no so we stand together here let me pull it up here so you guys can can see it without it being covered by the chat box we stand together wait wait it's literally unplayable guys it's literally unplayable we we stand together says the number two it says the number two and heroic refrain says the word two. Oh no oh god why would they do this this happens so much in Legends of Runeterra. There's so many cards. There's so many cards that they do this with. This is the worst offense. There's a Reddit. I can guarantee you guys, someone's typing up a Reddit post right now. Literally unplayable. Heroic refrain TWO. We stand together just says two. <laughs> oh God. Oh, my OCD, dude. That actually, this one hurts me. Like normally I don't care, but these cards are literally designed to be like effectively parallel cards and they they just had one job. They play like <laughs> Check Brothers Bond. I mean, yeah, Brothers Bond will say which one of these is wrong. Brothers Bond uses the number 2. All right. So we can confirm it's this new one, Heroic Refrain, which is the wrong one. All right. Um yeah, and then of course we've got Transposition powerful meme card we'll see where this ends up going um but unfortunately i don't see any combo with it right now that wouldn't be absolutely trolly uh and hothead looks kind of cute i mean this will probably randomly happen a lot off of just stuff like yeah i mean you'll get this off of like bandle city mayor right like even if you're not main decking hothead yourself you will be able to get it off of random stuff um and honestly even so as a three amount of four two it has a solid stat line 
and even if you don't have a way to search the champion if you play this on turn three there's a good chance you'll have drawn a champion so if you're running six champions in your deck most champions that you run on decks like this you're going to be keeping in your opening hand the odds of drawing a champion by turn six that you would have gotten off of hothead you've got what three natural dawes it's not really high um but it's not that bad it, it, it's higher than you might think depending on the deck and the mulligan phase and how many champions you run and the exact turn you're looking for it'll be like 20 to 25 percent which is actually not bad like if you just slap this on turn three three mana four two is not great stat line but if you draw like a four four lulu with i don't know quick attack on like turn five then that that can be worth it right so i don't know if i would main deck hothead but i think this card, especially like when you get it off of random things, might actually make bigger waves than it immediately seems. All right. So yeah, that's the that's the initial impressions for uh, today's reveals. Overall, I'm curious, you know, what what we're getting out of this Fey archetype. I really, I honestly have no idea what we're what we're getting out of this Fey archetype. I I, I mean, Yumi's gonna be a Fey. And apparently, they like just buffing all the Fey's in their hand. There's probably gonna be more Owl Cat cards. They really like this owl cat card. It's it's it just like everything just summons owl cats. This is this is the Fey deck. Your board is gonna be six of these guys for some reason. I guess I don't know. It's <laughs> who, who knows who knows. But it, it's looking like that's the direction this is going. Um, and uh, yeah, no. Overall, I'm excited for this reveal season. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next reveal if you're watching on youtube remember you could have been watching this live on twitch because as the reveals are dropping at 9 a.m pacific standard time every day i'm live on twitch reacting to these live so see you guys there and uh yeah see you tomorrow for the new reveals i don't know how to close out these videos